Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News analyst, Great Malabite, Emmanuel Efeni. Good morning, Dr. Abati. Seems to be wearing an <laughs> strange version of the same suit. <laughs> Are you, are you? you can see that this is the original version. It's I brighter. Want, I don't want to come in between two great malabites. It's a malabite issue, but very, well, uh, you're looking identical in well, your suit. I, I that. You know, for we fashionistas, we know there are color versions. But for those who are not so familiar with that, they will say, ah, oh, what is fake, what is original now? <laughs> Good morning, Ayo. Good morning, Mr. <laughs> Good morning, all our viewers, and uh, <coughs> happy celebration to our Muslim brothers who are celebrating the Eid al Fitr uh, with uh, a string of uh, holiday um, around the country. Three days at the federal level, some states have even added a fourth day to celebrate this uh, important Muslim holiday. Now, we start the review with this day, Nigeria's newspaper of record. The story above the mast head. Despite economic challenges, Zenit, Access, UBA, GTCO, two others generated 3.11 trillion Naira profit in 2023. Proposed 444.52 billion Naira combined dividends. Zenit remains the most profitable bank in Nigeria. Gerigu, first company to release quarter one 2024 result declares 14.46 naira billion naira profit well despite uh, the economy the challenges in the economy and even the banking sector the banks the big banks are uh, declaring humongous profit and i think that should be good news for shareholders of this bank perhaps encouragement for people to put in their money into bank shares at the stock exchange, especially with the recapitalization of uh, banks just around the corner uh, with the profit being declared. I'm sure many will look at that direction, investing in banks. But again, report elsewhere saying that, um, in fact, the recapitalization will bring about more foreign direct investment into the economy, as many out there. Uh, seeing these kind of uh, results from the banks who want to bring in their money into the Nigerian economy and perhaps invest in some of these banks uh, in the process of recapitalization. But Gary Group Power, uh, the first company to be listed, power company to be listed in the uh, Nigerian Stock Exchange, now the first to release is a quarter one 2024 results. Of course, the profit there uh, is what should make uh, investors smile. Kudos again, Femi or Tedola, no when to move. And the results are showing right there in the books of um, Giribu Power in its first quarter of 2024 result. Now, other stories, the front page of this, the article doubles down on Lagos Calabar Highway project. One sustainable to reveal cost. Queries how administration got the design right of way in seven months. Umai, former VP doesn't understand figures misrepresenting facts. Well, I think the issues seem to be very clear. Atiku Abubakar insisting that a project of this nature is a welcome development that this project is about to get off the ground. It will cover nine states. It will bring development along that corridor. But can we know the costs? And that is what Atiku Abubakar is saying. And I don't think he's alone in that direction. Can we know the costs? We cannot have opaque contract award system. In one breath, it's going to be private sector driven. In one breath, the federal government is releasing so much for the kickoff. So what is the true position? I think the government officials, um, the Timber administration, will need to 
Uh, put the figures out there. In the spirit of transparency, that's what we expect in a democratic setting. And uh, I don't think Atiku Abubakar has gone out of his way in asking for this question, asking these questions, I think, on behalf of the rest of us. Yes, you want to say he's doing the job of the opposition leader. Well, it's a job that has to be done, and I don't think his questions are out of uh, place. But not only Atiku Abubakar is raising questions. If we look at the front page of the Guardian newspaper, the Guardian, more queries protest against Lagos Calabar Coastal Road Project despite defense. Of course, um, uh, Funcho Dohati, the go governorship candidate of the African Democratic Congress in the last uh, governorship election, has written to, to the government uh, of Lagos State and, of course, uh, concerning those structures that will be destroyed uh, that will be removed in the area considered as a right of way. And that the government need to take a second look and see how they can get around it. That even the shanties that are said to be on that way, you don't just bulldoze everybody out of the place. You have to make provision. Otherwise, it will cause social problems for society. The people who live there have to find a way, even though they are living in shanties. That will, in itself can create a social problem. So there are a number of questions and issues around this um, Calabar uh, Lagos uh, project, road project. So I think answers should be provided. And of course, even the owner of Landmark uh, Resort Center, Paul Owan Owanibe, uh, of course, it too has its own issues uh, because that investment is about to be pulled down. And it's also raising questions. He got approval. He paid money. And now you just want to remove that structure. When that approval was given, did anybody not know that there's a project that has been on board, that has been in the works for some time, the Lagos Calabar uh, Road Project. Now, if we just return to uh, the this day newspaper, return to this day newspaper, the lead story there. Tinubu Atiku Obi governors celebrate Muslim Omar at Eder Fitri Canvas Unity Love. President Six Union of Wheels, action to build Nigeria. We are focused on securing nation service uh, say service chiefs, IGP orders tight security nationwide. Federal government extend public holidays to Thursday. Yes, as is the uh, fashion in times like this, times of celebration. Leaders, the president leading uh, that uh, message to Nigerians, not just uh, the Muslim Umar. Uh, using the opportunity of this celebration to remind Nigerians of the need to continue to demonstrate love, show unity uh, as the government seeks to build this nation again from its broken, uh, uh, from broken systems which we have in this country. Of course, other leaders, Hatiku Abubakar, presidential candidate of the uh, PDP in the last presidential election, Peter Obi, uh, Labour Party presidential candidate, and of course, governors across the country all sending messages of love, unity, compassion, and the need to be one another's uh, keeper in this time. So especially, but of course, Atiku and Peter will be reminded Nigerians that yes, we are celebrating, but we know these are tough times. That in itself, uh, because there are many who will not celebrate so happily uh, this Edel um, Fitri because of the tough times families are facing right now. Other newspapers have this story also. The New Telegraph newspaper, Edel Fitri, Tinubu calls for unity in nation building as Abbas, Fek, Governors, Khan, Atiku, Obi, others felicitate Muslims. Federal government extends public holiday. Now, 
The Nation newspaper also has a story, Eid, let's rebuild together President urges Nigerians. Well, um, if we just look at, um, now the Guardian newspaper again, the lead story of the Guardian, 2017 Bushed Water Resource Bill, 179 million Nigerians in their streets lack access to portable water, water nationwide. Yes, water, clean water, portable water is a problem. Getting, of course, <laughs> most, fam most families uh, provide their own borehole, provide their own clean water, but not everybody, not every property owner can provide that. And many Nigerians have to deal with water not fit for purpose. And this is a major problem. Now, if we look at the Business Day newspaper, another problem facing the country. Private hospitals in a fix as operating cost bite. Many healthcare providers folding up ACPAN, Healthcare Providers Association of Nigeria, um, saying that um, most healthcare providers in the in the category could no longer cover the bare minimum expenses required to stay up, uh, stay operational, such as rent, utilities, uh, like electricity, payroll for essential staff, and basic medical supplies. Well, the, pri the private hospitals play a critical role in healthcare provision in this country and with the costs of running hospitals going up by the day, many are folding up. And one consequence of such is that the owners of such hospitals, the doctors who own such hospitals may just have to look elsewhere because some of the doctors that still stay in this country is because they are practicing, they have private uh, hospitals, where they still make at least good amount of money while catering for the people. So if they can no longer uh, run this hospital because of rising costs, they may just down tools, close shop, move elsewhere, take their services to other countries. So it's an area the government has to look into also. Now the Vanguard newspaper, the lead story, tariff high, 20% of band A users without prepaid meters. Prepaid meters not readily available operators Fear of estimated billings haunt businesses, especially SMEs. Minimum wage amount will propose no longer realistic labor to adjust demand by 300%. Another story on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper, Okwama Army Board begins sitting in worry. Okwama leaders, uh, leaders, lawyer, count us out. Our people are suffering in the bush. Okoloba leader, will participate. His Royal Highness Klanama, the fourth, no, the eighth, Pere of Akubene main kingdom. Nobody invited us. Well, the lawyers and the people of Okwama, they are saying they won't attend that hearing of the board set up by the military high command to investigate what really happened at Okwama that led to the brutal killing of 17 uh, military personnel, because the military are still hold in char uh, taking charge of the town. Most of their, sit their uh, residents, the people, are in the forest suffering. So how come you want them to come and testify and while their people are suffering? I think they should be elect to allow the people to live normal life while you investigate what caused this uh, uh, problem. Because many of the people in the forest, they are innocent people who know nothing about how uh, this happened. So I think it's something the president has to intervene. You cannot just continue punishing innocent persons while we're still looking for the real culprits in the killings of 17 soldiers. Now, the Punch newspaper has a report, Rising Naira Value Presidency Bas Cardoso vows further clamp down on racketeers. Agencies will step up enforcement against racketeers to ensure Nigeria, Nigerians are not cheated. Presidency, Tinubu Financial Engineer, 
expect stronger Naira in quarter one of 2025. Spokesman tells Nigerians. Well, if we look at um, other story, uh, story, the Nigerian Tribune newspaper. Yes, um, the lead story, dollar bribery allegation. Kanu assembles 15 witnesses for Ganduje, wife, six others trial, arraignment fixed for April 17. Well, we'll see how that pan out. Abdullah Ganduje, former governor of Kanu State, of course, when that uh, dollar issue came up, the House of Assembly then took it up, and at one point they had to drop the idea. But now, the government of the day has revived that matter, and they will have their day in court. Ganduje's wife, son, <laughs> and some others who are alleged to have participated in this bribery scandal. Now, if we look at um, one story above the masthead of Nigerian Tribune, for those waiting for the new Olubadon to take, uh, to mount the throne, why Olakunle can't be enthroned as Olubadan now, kingmaker? And of course, reports elsewhere say that because he has health challenges. He's not in a position to assume uh, the position as Olubadon. So just by way of update, for those um, who have been waiting to hear about the new Olubadon, if we look at the foreign newspapers quickly, put the Financial Times of, uh, the Financial Times, if we put it up there, yes, uh, a number of stories there, but the story, my story of, of interest actually is that of um, Rwanda Air refusing to participate in Rishi Sunak's Rwanda program for branding problems because they know that that in itself may just be a problem for, yes, let's, yes, the story. Rwandan state airline turned down road in Sunak's asylum plan over brand fears. That is the report there in the Financial Times. Of course, the Guardian newspaper, thousands of children unsure of gender identity let down by NHS. Landmark report blames toxic trends, debate, and unproven treatments. Ruben and Ayo. Very well, quickly, uh, just a number of things. No, it's not that uh, uh, Rwanda is pulling out of the, uh, uh, the Rwanda project. The, the Rwandan government is fully informed. No, I'm talking about the airline, the and, airline. And yesterday... Uh, it's the airline we're talking about, not the government. The uh, uh, president of uh, Rwanda, Paul Kagame, met with uh, Mr. Uh, Rishi Sunak, the prime minister uh, of uh, the UK. But the problem is that Rwanda Air is saying, having been offered the opportunity to ferry, you know, uh, uh, refugees from, I'm being interrupted. Now, you know, uh, uh, to ferry refugees from uh, Britain to uh, Rwanda, you know, they say no, because it, they could suffer reputational risk, okay. you know, and that it could affect their brand. Now, the problem here is that the Rwandan government owns Rwanda Air 100%. Okay. So there is a contradiction here. While the government of Rwanda wants to be part of it, at the same time, they're saying, well, Rwanda cannot uh, take people. And if they use Royal Airline of the, of, the, of the British, the government is saying that that will be too expensive. But however, I want to use the uh, opportunity today to pay tribute to three very prominent Nigerians whose birthday is around this time. Yesterday, Mr. Pascal Dossier, former president of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, uh, chairman of the Pan-Atlantic uh, uh, University, founder and chairman of Diamond Bank, was 85. You know, having been born April uh, 9, uh, 1939. So congratulations to him. And I understand that there will be pepper soup and jollof rice in celebration, which is well deserved in recognition of his uh, distinction and achievements. Today is the birthday of uh, Chief Ayu Adibanjo, nationalist, patriot, very distinguished elder statesman, who is known for his uh, consistency in politics and also 
for his commitment to the ideas of federalism. He's a federal leader. So he is 96 today. When he turned 90, he said his ambition is to live beyond the age of 105. His father died at 105. Mm -hmm. So we wish Papa Yuadi Banjo uh, many long, more years long life. of celebration. <laughs> <laughs> no, we wish him many more years. Many more years. And finally, today is also Elijah Aliko Dangote's birthday. He is 67 uh, today. And of course, Elijah Aliko Dangote uh, knows no introduction. Uh, president of the uh, Dangote Group, uh, who continues to give, continues to contribute to Nigeria. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, but what I note here is that, you know, it's a cause for celebration for them, and they are providing implications. So when I hear younger people <laughs> saying that they can't provide implications, <laughs> well, in the spirit of uh, Edi Fitri, we wish everyone happy birthday. Happy birthday to, and I, I believe today is Chief Tommy Kimi's 80th birthday. Okay, as well. yes, okay. Chief Tommy so Kimi. Chief Tommy, it's a, yes, it's a day of celebration. Uh, yes. So happy birthday to all. A lot of jollofing yes. and pepper soup. Yes, <laughs> so I will have, I'm not, no food for no cooking or anything for the next few days. Uh, yeah. All sorted by all these celebrations. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mr. Thank you very much, Emmanuel yeah. Fenning.